Hi everybody, it's uh, Sai here, one of the organisers of Halton Rocks 2020. Um, the more eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that I'm stationed at the baby gate. There it is, there. And that can only mean one thing, it's time to uh, announce another act who you'll be able to see performing at Halton Rocks 2020. Um, as I've previously touched upon, we've done quite a lot of video interviews for this. Um, not everybody has a video call software, so in some cases we've done audio interviews. Now, for this particular uh, guest of ours, we did a video uh, call, but the internet being what it is, you know, you can have good days and bad days and peaks and troughs, and we had a lot of uh, problems with screen freeze and one thing and another, so... But we definitely wanted to include this interview because when I introduce this act, you'll understand why she's uh, she's absolute top class. Um, and we decided to keep the audio because there's so many problems of a technical nature with the visual. And this is an audio interview, but it's important that we included it because um, this next guest is a great artist and a, a smashing human being with a lot of really good stuff to say. So Halton Rocks 2020 takes place on October the 10th at the studio. And without any further ado, let's uh, introduce the next act. Sarah Whitfield. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Thanks very much for joining us this afternoon. And thanks very much for being part of Halton Rocks 2020. It's brilliant that you're, you're involved again. You've been so important to what we've done all these years. So thank you and welcome. Thank you for having me again. It's always a pleasure when you ask me to play Halton Rocks. More than happy to come and join again. Awesome. Well, that's great. Really looking forward to the gig. Um, and I'm not sure when we'll be putting these little um, interviews out yet, what stage in the lockdown will be or whether lockdown is going to be lifted a bit more. But I think we're in week 11, I think, at, at the time of recording. So how's it, how's it been treating you? How are you finding it? I've got an app, actually. Oh. We're, we're in week eight and five days. <laughs> it just feels like 11 weeks. Yeah. It does. <laughs> so what's it like, Sarah, lockdown? Um, you and I are both um, songwriters. It's, uh, it's our natural state to observe things. What's it like as an artist being in uh, lockdown? Has it affected you? Have you noticed anything? How have you been relating to it? It's, I mean, for me, it's not, for me, the idea of staying inside isn't that different because obviously with like my various chronic illnesses I have to rest a lot anyway so the staying inside part hasn't been too different for me but I do miss like the social aspects of things and obviously I mean it's good to have time by yourself because you think about a lot of things and I probably will have some inspiration for me but I do miss um social contact but I've been finding my love for music more again like I'm listening to a lot more music different styles that I didn't used to listen to um, and that's been really helping so I always turn to the arts in a crisis <laughs> nice one Sarah so as we uh, we alluded to earlier Sarah you've been very important to Halton Rocks and Rex over the years so that I can't imagine there's many people not familiar with you but just in case anybody is planning to come down on the night who's maybe not familiar uh, with Sarah Whitfield tell us a bit about yourself when did it all start so for me it started um in about 2006 when i joined rewire which was at the brinley which was the revamped version of fused um and i went there with some friends from school met a lot of other like fellow musicians and that's where i first started to like learn to play guitar first started to sing in bands um and then i started to write music by myself as a result of that i don't think i would have probably done it had it not been for rewire um and then I played my first sort of proper gig um, at the Picket in Liverpool. Um, I won a, I was running up in a songwriting competition and one of the prizes was to play there. So that was my first experience of a proper gig. And it's just sort of um, gone from there really. So I started when yeah, I was like 16, 17 and I'm 30 now. So a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, you've got a lot of experience behind you now and uh, you've got a reputation as well that you've, that you've built up quite rightly over the years through some of these great performances. And it sounds like um, quite naturally you'll have ended up doing the type of thing you've ended up doing but from what you're describing there there's been some important catalysts along the way that have sort of led you in one direction or another yeah so we were we were talking a little bit there about the lockdown and how how artists uh, relate to it and of course the, this thing's affected everybody and um, would you have a some people are dealing with this really well and take it in the strides others may struggle what would you say to people would you what would your message be if you've got any message at all for people during this period um, so for people that are struggling, I mean, I've struggled quite 
a lot because um, due to the restrictions of things, um, you're not allowed to see people that aren't in your household. And obviously I don't live with my partner. So that's been quite tough. That's been eight weeks of that. But I just say, try and keep a connection as much as you can. So whether that's through messages, um, some people enjoy doing video calls, some people don't, um, but that can be quite good. And just sort of, I found that I managed better when I was doing things that I enjoy. So reading, watching films and TV shows, um, I like to do some video gaming. So I did a bit of that, mostly listen to music and just sort of finding, remembering the things that make you happy. Because I think back in normal life, when life was just rush of working and commitments and stuff, you didn't really have time to do any of that. So in lockdown, it's kind of just remembering what makes you happy and doing that. Um, and remembering that these are unprecedented circumstances and it's okay if you're struggling because this is a situation that we've never had to deal with before. So um, don't, like, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. And I think that's a really, a really good message that in spite of all the hardships that this situation brings, there's an opportunity as well to immerse yourself in things that make you happy. So I think that's a good message. So, so good on you for that. And, and we were talking a little bit about, let's talk about the type of things that do make us happy. And, you know, you and I are both part of this music scene and we, we love our gigs and we love our, occasions and, and going back to Holton Rocks and um, we talked a little bit about how you came to be a performer what kind of performer would you say you are for people who are coming out to, to Holton Rocks who, who've maybe not seen you before what would they expect would you, how would you describe yourself um it's always a tricky question to answer um so in terms of music style over the years um I've been influenced by different people and over time that has influenced the music that I've written so in my gigs I tend to play a mix of older songs and newer songs there is a kind of um variety there um I'd say that all my songs are kind of drawn from personal experience because I really I relate a lot to songs that have that element to them and um, so that's why I tend to write them and I also um like to do versions of songs but with a little twist on them um, I definitely more recently been leaning towards like Billie Eilish's style and um, I've always loved daughter that's sort of the kind of direction I'd like to go in um, so yeah just expect a a mix of things sometimes I've been told I've got a, like a ethereal voice which is nice um but yeah just a mix of stuff hopefully you'll have a good time I'm sure we will and um, I think you do have quite an ethereal voice particularly when you cover I had a dream it really does go go that way it's, it's a beautiful thing to listen to when you do that song and you, you were referring to daughter there and one of the things about I mean I don't do much social media I don't do snapchats and instagrams or anything but I do Facebook and Twitter and one of the nice things about following you is that um, you, you you post your influences quite a lot and, and videos from YouTube and I've been introduced to yeah things just, just just by your following your Facebook like just, I mean you, you like mentioned some music yeah you do and you mentioned Darcy there for example um, that's just one of I commented on some a link you posted by somebody else recently and um, you're very I would say that you're very current and, and up to date with music is that fair to say um, I think what I caught at the end of you saying is that I'm quite current and up to date. I do like discovering new music. I'm also the type of person that will listen to music from like 10 years ago. So I am quite guilty of listening to music from years and years ago because I think I like the nostalgia element of things and think everybody does. But yeah, I like discovering new music. And for me, I find, I think initially I like the sound of something, songs that I share, I like them because of the, the vibe. And I'm glad that you enjoy the music that I share. <laughs> It's, it's, it's one of the main things I love about Facebook, really, is sometimes people will post a link of Johnny Cash or something you've heard a thousand times, but I think Facebook and, and people posting their influences is a good way to expose yourself to, to things you might not have otherwise have heard. And um, and just to go back to Holton Rocks, like, like I said earlier, you, you've been performing at Holton Rocks and, and Rex for years and years and years now. Um, why is it so important? Why do you say yes? Why have you said yes again? Why is Holton Rocks important? I mean, for me, it's like a no-brainer to say yes, because, you know, I started out in the music community in Witness and it's always been so welcoming and so encouraging. And, I mean, there's so much talent in the community. I mean, um, a prime example of someone that I love is Natalie McCool, who is from Witness, and I adore her music. Um, and she's also, like, a really nice person as well. Um, I love Natalie. So, I mean, I just think it's, it's important to support the local community and plus... I, it just feels like home to me, um, you know, this, this bond I've made through the music scene that I'll never like lose and I just, I just love being a part of it so whenever I get asked it's always like a huge honour and it's just an immediate yes. Thanks Sarah and I think you're right about um, the special type of bond that this um, music scene creates and uh, I'm coming up 40 this year and 
I've, I've been gigging down at the studio and places around Witness since I was about 15 and I've always called it a community and people come and people go when you've got stalwarts who are there for longer than I've been there a lot longer and people who are new to the scene but it always yeah. feels like a community whenever you get together everybody's just instant friends and you just pick up where you left off don't you yeah definitely definitely and um we, we i mean we've talked music we've talked lockdown we've talked some serious subjects we've talked some emotive subjects so let's have a bit of levity okay we're in lockdown now let's say we get out of lockdown and for some reason sometime in the future the whole country's got a lockdown all over again if you could choose one person of our music scene to be in lockdown with who would it be and why um so the first person i would choose would be natalie just because she's so much fun she's so talented and i would love to just get in a room with her with all of her guitars and all of her stuff and just learn because um i think i'm still quite i still want to know about like pedal effects and all sorts and i just think she's such a brilliant songwriter that she could teach me a lot and we'd have a lot of laughs and probably a little bit of rum and in the same <laughs> vein and um, the other person would probably be Isaac because um i mean i've played with him before in september he's mad as a box of cats i know that he was a barman for a period of time so he'd probably rustle up some good drinks so that would be my two choices <laughs> plus as well he's really talented as well and um, when we were playing in september we said about making some more music so i think that would be really good good choices like you say isaac coley and i don't know isaac very well i've met him a couple of times but by joe is a character and uh like you say natalie mccool she's supremely talented tremendous performer uh, trem tremendous uh, songwriter as well so well, Sarah, listen, um, I want to thank you very much for taking the time out today to, to speak to us to promote Halton Rocks. And thanks once again yeah. um, for saying yes to do the gig. We're really looking forward to seeing you on the night. Um, Sarah Whitfield, thank you so much for that. Thank you for having me, Sarah. It was really good to speak to you.